You're listening to That Gratitude Guy podcast with David George Brooke. That Gratitude Guy. Learn about how gratitude turns what you have into enough through stories of motivation and inspiration. Wherever you are in your life and whatever you're going through, That Gratitude Guy is here to help you achieve great things and live a happier, healthier life. Change the way you live today right here with David George Brooke. That Gratitude Guy starting now. Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to That Gratitude Guy podcast. I am David George Brooke, That Gratitude Guy, your host, where my mission is to have guests that relate and recall moments of their lives that were propelled and energized by utilizing the power of a gratitude mindset. You can expect to get some tips and takeaway from each of my special guests. My podcast is downloaded every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on the Transformation Talk Radio Network and is available on Apple, Spotify, and Google. Please subscribe and give me a five-star rating if you like what you hear. I always appreciate that. And as a reminder, I do gratitude keynote speeching, speeches, uh, speaking rather, and gratitude coaching. You can reach me at thatgratitudeguy.com, or as you can see in the background, thatgratitudeguypodcast.com. So let me get on with the show and introduce to my guest. Always, every week, my favorite part of the show we talk about some gratitude things, but my special guest is always the highlight, no exception this week. So let me tell you a little bit about Tom Palladino. Tom Palladino is a scalar energy researcher with over 25 years of experience developing healing techniques designed to help people all over the world to recover from pathogenic infection and experience true health and wellness. The story begins back in Tom's undergraduate days when he became inspired by his research into the work of various scientists. Tom developed a unique healing technique using scalar energy called scalar light that appears to have the ability to transmute pathogens quickly and painlessly. This technique uses photographs of people who are seeking relief from the symptoms of pathogenic diseases. Tom's scalar light invention uses a remote passive light energy to influence the human biofield. And I'm going to have him tell you a lot more about this because it'll be even better hearing it from the source. So Tom, welcome to the podcast. I thank you so much, David. Thank you. You bet. And I also, I always like to kind of start with a little bit of context, not the 20 minute version, but give the listeners kind of the five minute version uh, or thereabouts of how Tom started out, maybe starting around college and some of the things you did as you kind of started out on your path down the down into the work world. Sure. Uh, first of all, what is scalar energy? It's not electricity. I'm working with a different type of energy than that of electromagnetic energy. Why, why did that grip me? Why was I so fascinated by that? Well, a man by the name of Nikola Tesla developed scalar energy instruments. Many of you have heard that name, Nikola Tesla. Mm -hmm. and, and Tesla was able to achieve with those scalar energy instruments what I consider to be unparalleled. Nobody has matched him in his brilliance. So I'm working with a technology that far exceeds the technology that in vogue today, electromagnetic energy. So this is why I've made a career out of chasing scalar energy, this new technology, this new and emerging technology. So versatile, so powerful. It, it has the ability to control nature. And with that in mind, this has been my career to pursue that narrow focus, if you will, of scalar energy research. Excellent. And so you mentioned Tesla too, which we hear a lot about, but what was it about this that maybe separated, you wanted to go down this field, maybe than a lot of the other choices and the other scientists that you connected with? Yeah, it, it, this is the road less traveled, David, mm. quite frankly. And so what is my point? Well, I've always been a pioneer and you know, I'm not afraid to lead the pack. I'm not afraid to, to separate myself from the crowd. I simply saw the virtue of this technology and I, and I saw what Tesla, I witnessed what Nikola Tesla could do with this free energy, scalar energy. And I said to myself, this is the future. This is going to liberate mankind, so to speak. And with that in, in mind, it's, it's been a, a hard, arduous career, but it's been well worth it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so kind of, again, for the, the non-scientist or the person that doesn't understand it, can you put it in layman's terms? And you mentioned here, where does scalar energy originate? But kind of explain it to the people that may not understand it from a scientific standpoint. 
It, it's so simple. I have seen this frequently. Everybody in the world is a scalar energy expert. Everybody has scalar energy expertise. It's sunlight and starlight. Scalar energy is the energy that drives our stars. It's the first energy. It's, it's the primal energy of the universe. Electricity and magnetism are a derivative or a subset of that energy. Mm -hmm. So I'm working with the initial energy of the universe, meaning this energy serves as the, uh, the instructions of the universe. This energy serves to give order out of chaos. I know that's a bold statement, but I hold by that. So I'm working with the actual framework, the actual footing of the universe with this energy, scalar energy. Excellent. And so when did you start this? When was the, the time you started this? Were you pretty that's far along or early on in your career? That was 50 years ago when I was a kid. I was reading about Nikola Tesla. And wow. I said to myself, I'm going to follow up. So I devoured anything I could on Tesla. And then I found other researchers who were working with scalar energy. And they were corroborating Tesla's results. So I said to myself, this is it. Even though there's only a few uh, prominent scientists that I would follow, nonetheless, I saw each scientist duplicating in some measure the results of Tesla. So mm -hmm. I said to myself, this is the free energy that we're looking for. Interesting. You also had mentioned earlier about sort of the difference between the scalar energy and the electromagnetic. Magnetic. Uh, explain Definitely. that a little bit further. Uh, let's let's just consider electricity as a current, um, a, a flow of electrons, if you will. We'll mm -hmm. just keep it very simple. All right. Scalar energy is nothing like that. Scalar energy fills the universe. So it's not per se um, a movement of electrons. It's the presence. It's a presence. Of, of energy and it pervades the universe. There is no point A and point B. It simply blankets the universe. So considering this from a logistical standpoint, it's, it's you know, difficult to harness electrons and then move them along the wire or, or to broadcast them per se. It's much easier, so to speak, to just access that dimension, the grid system of scalar energy that pre-exists and all you have to do is find your way into that dimension and you can have the immediate transference of energy or information at a flash. Interesting. That's very, very cool. And you mentioned the flow of energy, too. So how does it then transmute matter? I like that. OK, so this scalar energy are the instructions out of the universe. The scalar energy brings order out of chaos. What am I getting at? Well, the, the order in part are molecular and atomic bonds. So I'll use my two fingers. My two fingers could represent a molecular bond, the actual chemical bond. It's the intelligence, the instructions that hold together matter. And I have uh, discovered with this instrument that I can break down the molecular bonds that hold together a microorganism. So by, by subjecting a microorganism to this intelligence or this energy, I can break it down. I can if you will, shatter its uh, geometry by way of energy. What happens? The microorganism, a bacterium, a fungus falls apart. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Oh, that's very cool. And then also, I noticed another thing too about it's done through a photograph. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. yes. That's uh, fantastic. So, uh, uh, so I'm going to hold my, up my photograph. I would actually take a, a printed photograph. People email me photographs all day long, and I insert a person's photograph inside the instrument. Now, what does that do? The photograph has the signature, the light signature, the light resonance of a person. So my instrument can detect a person by their light resonance and then send them energy in this energy field by virtue of the input of their photograph. Their photograph carries information. So I work with people around the world by way of their photograph and I can send their, their energy signature, if you will, information. I don't work with flesh and blood. I work with the biofield. I, I work with what some people call the matrix, which is really the spirit body. It's the non-physical informational body of a person. Mm -hmm. So this is an actual machine that you yes. have that you put together. And then now how long do you have the machine? Yeah, uh, I was, it was rather fortuitous. I, I met um, uh, an inventor, who, uh, the Hieronymus family, the Hieronymus family. He was an American inventor. And he, at that time, had passed, but his wife survived. And I was able to purchase scalar energy instruments back in the 90s. Wow. And that gave me my footing. That gave me my introduction to the practical application of scalar energy. 
And therefrom, I perfected these instruments from this hieronymus prototype, so to speak. So uh, I've been at it now for 25, 30 years, working with this instrumentation. I will say that the process is dependable. That is, it, it can be repeated. So I am observing the laws of nature. And in so doing, the laws of nature uh, cannot are, are not mutable, so to speak. So I'm able to work with this energy. It's dependable. And what I'm saying to the audience, I've developed a, a guaranteed approach in which I can break apart microorganisms. Wow, that is so cool. So you've been working on it for 25 years. How has been your business model? I know, of course, we're on a podcast and so forth, but how have you sort of gotten this out to the public, if you will? Uh, by, by gracious hosts like you. <laughs> uh, let, let me say this. What I'm doing is rather avant-garde. It's, it's, it's trend-setting. And in some ways, it's still suppressed or it's frowned upon. So I have to go about this rather prudently, and I have to find the, the right avenue and the people who will at least listen to me. Mm -hmm. um, this is not taught in academia. So what I am, am venturing on is really groundbreaking research. Well, and I think that's, that's really fantastic, and I, I give you a lot of credit. There's so many people that you find out their story, and it involved having people that were skeptic, uh, skeptics and just, I don't believe this, and there's only one way to do it, and it's just fascinating. I love anybody that's got the, the guts, if you will, to find the technology and to move forward and, and uh, sort of the poo-pooers off to the side. So, Tom, in a, in a case like with the photograph, you, you took a picture or photograph of yourself. Mm -hmm. What's kind of the procedure when you mentioned you have the, the, the photograph, you put it in the machine, yep. and then as it analyzes it, then kind of tell us sort of what happens or what kind of comes out on the other side, if you will. Sure. It, it's, a, it's a process that I've perfected, calibrated, in which I'm able, by way of a person's photograph, to identify over 400,000 species of microbes, germs. Mm -hmm. And whatever collection of those microbes a person has, I'm able to break them apart or disassemble them. Some people call that transmutation. So the process is called pathogenic cleanse. That's the term that I use. And I think it's apropos. Um, by way of a person's photograph, I can identify the pathogens and cleanse the body and rid the body of mm -hmm. those pathogens by the medium, by the interface of a person's photograph. So this is the new science in which you don't have to visit a clinic, you don't have to visit a laboratory. Your photograph is your bilocated version, if you will. So if you are identifying those pathogens, you can also sort of improve the overall health of somebody who's already healthy, but then also yes. improve somebody who is not well and has to do things. So when yes. you get come out on the other side, is there kind of like a well, this is the report I have for you. What comes out after you've identified those and gone through that uh, that process? You, you know, it, it, it really has to be bifurcated. I can prove what I'm doing in my laboratory by way of a photograph, but then I depend upon people and I depend upon the results. Mm -hmm. So to give you a, a quick overview, two, year, two weeks ago, I received test results from Tanzania. I've been working with people in Tanzania for years who are HIV positive. And according to this group of people that I've been working with, they no longer have any viral load for HIV, and they no longer have any symptoms for HIV viral disease. Now, bear in mind, I only work with their photograph, and judging from my work on their photograph, I could detect that I was destroying the HIV virus found in their biofilm. But I have to wait upon people for them to provide their firsthand experience, their, their testimony. Mm -hmm. and, and to the to the very man, to, to and every individual has said that they no longer have any viral load for HIV. Wow. Wow. And then have you had, I, I was thinking about it in the world that I live in with speaking and coaching and things, and I use a lot of uh, video testimonials. I just had a, a course yesterday on how to be a speaker, and there was a number of people said, let's do a, we'll do a video testimonial for you. Do you have uh, video type testimonials or written or the things that the people have experienced have gone through it? Yes, we, we do on our website. And uh, some people are, are bold enough to provide their video testimony. Some people just want to write in. And, and I can understand it. You know, in the case of HIV, it still carries a very heavy stigma. So True. many people do not want to show their face, do not want to reveal their uh -huh. identity. Uh -huh. Excellent. And I'm going to put it in the show notes too, but just at this juncture, what's the website name? scalarlight.com that's s-c-l-a-r s-c-a-l-a-r scalarlight.com scalarlight.com thank you 
Well, I can I can certainly see that with HIV and those type of things. Are there other things that have been what you would consider the most common thing that has kind of been cured? Is that not like the common cold, but other allergies or things like this that's come up through the analysis? Consider this, and I'm working on a global basis. Tuberculosis is a, is a horrible bacterial infection. And it's mm -hmm. many people in Africa and in India are infected with tuberculosis. So we've had great success in breaking down, destroying mycobacterium tuberculosis, the bacterium that causes TB. Malaria, Lyme disease, herpes, wow. dengue fever. Um, any, any microorganism that would cause a, a disease, a pathogenic disease, or at least contribute to some type of um, neurological impairment or some type of skin condition, mm -hmm. we can destroy germs. That's my statement to the audience. This mm -hmm. instrument, this process that I've developed will destroy germs by way of a person's photograph. But then I have to wait for the individual to provide their uh, testimony because I always work with the biofilm. Nobody is ever in my laboratory, so to speak. So this is a little counterintuitive. You don't visit a laboratory. I work with your energy field, and then you report to me if you feel better. Interesting. So I think in terms of, and I'm very much a, as I mentioned, I talk a lot about gratitude a lot, and I've done a lot of research on gratitude and how it impacts people and both physically and mentally and emotionally. And, and people sometimes say to me, well, that sort of sounds woo woo. And I go, well, whatever, I'm, I'm telling you it works. And people are, that are grateful, they get less sick and they have less doctor right. and so forth. So thinking right. in those terms with what you do, I think of the traditional model. And as I said, I'm very uh, in tune with anything that's new and exciting. And I just think it's so important. And we all run into a lot of people. We've never done it that way before. So, you know, how can this be possible? So I'm very much open to that. And I'm sure a lot of my listeners are as well. So when you think about the traditional model of the person goes to the doctor and they get uh, they check, get checked out and they have their blood checked, their blood pressure and so forth. And then they say, well, you need to get this prescription or you need to lose some weight or whatever they do. What what sort of on so sort of explain again for me and the listeners on the other side of the analysis of the photograph, is it something that they then you tell them they're they need to do X, Y, Z, or do they just sort of, does it get, does the energy flow to them and then they experience these changes and get back to you? The, the, the people have to experience it. And it's really, it's on, on their shoulders and upon their, if you will, their medical team. Now consider mm -hmm. this. Today, I work with over 150,000 photographs. Wow. People are sending me photographs. Sometimes I receive collages of a thousand people on a, on a photograph collage. So there's, there's no way I could ever provide medical attention or medical advice. And per se, I'm a researcher. I'm not a medical professional. So this is the new science of scalar energy in which I have standardized these sessions, these treatments. Mm -hmm. It's a new approach to, to wellness. It's quantum wellness. It's Nobody is physically present once again. And I really have to rely upon people to, to see to it on their own that they practice self-care and that they have the proper medical attention. So this is the new paradigm that's unfolding. Obviously, if, I, if I'm treating 150, 200,000 people a day, there's no way I could possibly give anybody one-on-one -on -one attention. Exactly. But 150,000 photos, holy oh cow. That's a lot of people. And, and as I was mentioning, as you said, through podcasts, everything. So that must have been a lot of word of mouth that got to you that yes. got in. That's yes. fantastic. That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. And so on something like that, you will mention at the end about some free sessions and so forth. But is is can you describe kind of a typical session that somebody goes through? And again, we'll have sure. some free ones at the end. But sure. I'll I'll describe our standardized session. For one hour a day, we rid the body, we identify and rid the body, if you will, of pathogens, microbes, such as viruses and bacteria. That's the pathogenic cleanse. Another hour, we, we balance the brain waves and the chakras. Scalar energy is, is a interface, a direct interface to our scalar brain waves and our scalar chakra system. And the remaining 22 hours a day, we're able to take this energy and create micronutrients. We're doing all of that by way of a photograph. So your photograph is being treated 24 hours a day, one hour a day for pathogens, one hour a day for chakras, and the remaining 22 hours a day for the nutrient therapy. And the upshot of that is, is sound health. People feel better. 
And after our 15 day trial, the greater majority of people say that they've experienced an improvement in their health. They might not be able to, to pinpoint it, but they feel better. Yeah, that's fantastic. So the initial thing, and as I say, we'll mention that when we wrap up too about the free sessions, but what happens is the person takes a photograph and they have to have a specific a size of photograph or a one that has enough pixels or anything like no. that that makes a no. difference. We, we ask, just keep now to answer your question, that's not necessary. Just send us a, a headshot, a bus, a bus shot. Okay. Um, and we, we will format the photograph and we will treat that photograph on a daily basis. Excellent. Okay, wonderful. And then I think, again, back when I mentioned like the woo-woo thing, which I'm just such a believer in alternative healing uh, modalities and properties and things, because I just, there's just so much more than what we're pushed upon as the American people with the American Medical Association and doctors and pharmacies that make all this money and so forth. So I think it's fantastic. But, um, but it, every, and sort of mention this in terms of how this energy is everywhere in the universe and thus it transcends time and space. I think that's really cool. Explain that. You know, in many ways, I feel it's the omnipresence of God, meaning God is not bound by time and space. Why would I say that? The stars create scale energy and the stars then flood the universe with this energy. So it's everywhere. If we have trillions upon trillions of stars, then I can guarantee you scalar energy has been broadcast by those stars and there's a blanket of scalar energy, so to speak. So scalar energy is one coordinated whole. It's not point A and point B, it's one integrated system. So scalar energy is the blanket of the universe. It is the matrix. It transcends accordingly time and space. Yeah, that's fantastic. And in terms of the future, because again, I think anytime we have a new, we call it modality, whatever it might be, I think there's always some time for uh, acceptance, if you will. And it mentions here, the scalar energy, how will its acceptance serve to change the world for the better? I think I know the answer, but, but answer that for the viewers. Uh, I'm going to give the audience, so for instance, Nikola Tesla over 100 years ago developed a, a tower in Long Island that was sending out energy, a wireless transmission of energy, and he was able to illuminate light bulbs. So wow. this is the free energy of the stars in which Tesla was able to broadcast that energy without a wire, without a substation, and illuminate light bulbs. That is free energy. That is our future. To be able to power the world with clean energy from the stars, infinite energy from the stars, and to put an end to the energy crisis. Yeah, that's fantastic. And you were mentioning when you used the 24 hour example, one hour on pathogens and one hour on chakras and 22 hours the micronutrients. <laughs> chakras to the extent that i know that i've done some reiki sessions and so forth yes. but that's really just another form of energy as well right of course our chakras are composed of scalar energy yeah that's, yeah. that's why we have these this spirit body scalar energy never degrades the chakras never degrade the chakras spin scalar energy spins our chakras are seven vortices of scalar light hmm. and so this is something I've always been curious about when I've had done the energy work. And I think in the world that we're in now as you and I are conversing on zoom and prior to the pandemic, everything was in person. And I know a lot of my talks in terms of big groups, all shut down and went to the, to the zoom platform. Mm -hmm. But again, this is more for my benefit, but maybe the listeners as well. How does the energy then transfer through the zoom, if you will, process where I've had somebody who was a, a chakra a Reiki session type energy session. And I mean, I felt some difference, but how does that actually, if you will, go through the get from one person to the next? Sure. Keep in mind, there is no point A and point B with scale energy. With electricity, it's a movement of electrons, say, from point A to point B. Now, imagine if you no longer have to consider yourself with the movement in, of energy, that everything is energy. Mm -hmm. The universe is energy. So is faith healing capable are we capable of that yes is intuition or clairvoyance a, a possibility of course mm -hmm. it, you access that dimension in which everything is interconnected and if everything is interconnected then you immediately transcend time and space time and space are no longer an impediment time and space are an impediment in the electromagnetic spectrum in a scalar energy environment you don't experience time and space 
And that's and speaking of time, explain how scalar energy is the cause of time. I like that. Okay, uh, there have been very scalar energy researchers. When you're working close to a, a high-powered scalar energy instrument, time stands still. Why? Because you're no longer subject to the motion of time. Meaning what? If this is a double helix of scalar energy, as it rotates, time moves forward. You could reverse that rotation and time would move backwards. So the movement of time is predicated upon the movement of scalar energy, which is always a rotation of the double helix. Mm -hmm. So this has been observed. Um, there have been some scientists who developed a scalar energy anti-gravity platforms. And when they're on that scalar energy anti-gravity platform, time does not advance because they're no longer in the electromagnetic spectrum. They're in a scalar energy spectrum that does not experience the movement of time. You transcend time. Mm, that's fantastic. And you mentioned too, I always think about, again, new technology, new modalities. I think about people, how do you convince people? And you said, yeah. whether it's on podcasts or different things. And I, I just admire the heck out of you for just taking something that maybe wasn't as popular. And one day it may be something, our sort of standard way we do things. Right. But with that in mind, uh, what unique experiences have you witnessed when working with scalar energy in your laboratory? Because I think that'd be interesting too. Yeah, I, I live in Florida. And, and during the summer months, when we have a strong storm, a lightning storm, Mm -hmm. My instruments will pick up the scalar energy from lightning. Lightning is a scalar energy discharge, and my instruments will start to spark or experience minor lightning bolts. Mm -hmm. So my instruments are communicating with the scalar energy environment. My instruments become empowered by the lightning, the scalar energy lightning in the ambient area. It's fascinating. Yeah, it sure my, is. My instrument is alive. My instrument mm -hmm. is organic. It, it's communicating with nature. Yeah, fantastic. And then uh, how does scalar energy assembles and maintains all physical forms? I think that's neat too. Talk, talk about that. Yeah, everything has intelligence. Everything has a geometry, an atom, a molecule, an element. What holds that together? And what is the instructions that holds together any element or, or compound? It's scalar energy. If, if you consider a hydrogen bond or an ionic bond, it doesn't matter. There's intelligence. That is a scalar energy intelligence that holds together the molecules that, that we, we, we experience in everyday life. Meaning what? That scalar energy is the intelligence of the universe. Without scalar energy, the universe would fall apart and would devolve to chaos. And thinking again about the, the typical person that's out there, uh, I've said something for on my seven decades on the planet that it's been the biggest question I've had about life. I mean, that sounds like sort of a broad brush statement, but it is since I was about 25, I've never understood why people don't take better care of themselves. Uh -huh. it, just, it makes no sense to me. I, I don't understand it. You know, smoking, drinking, drugs, weight, all these things. And since I was in my twenties, I've always taken care of myself, never smoked, never did drugs, never did any, I just didn't see the point. So I don't understand. So to the person out there, what's the best way to kind of explain to them? Is it sort of try it, you'll like it? Or what's what would be the best way to approach that kind of, I don't know, skeptic or person? Well, why don't we personalize this with people? Everybody has a mind and a heart. What am I getting at? The human mind and the human heart are scalar energy vessels. Mm -hmm. Thinking is a function of scalar energy. We have brain waves, scalar energy brain waves. Our emotions, our, our, our feelings are scalar energy emotions. They're scalar energy waveforms. So thinking and feeling are scalar energy experiences. Now, when you're tapping into that life force energy, you, you work hand in hand with the life force. You work hand in hand with God. That's appropriate. That's normal. That's natural. Why would you ever want to go against that grain? Yeah. Yeah. Great question. I was sort of wonder. So in Mr. Palladino's journey through life as that gratitude guy, how has gratitude played a part in being grateful in your life all these years? You no, know, here's a great point. You, you make it or break it sometimes the way you think, mm -hmm. the way you set up your life. If you want to be negative in life, you're going to encounter a negative environment. You're right. making that negative environment. So get away from that. Be positive. Have great gratitude. There's so much to be thankful for. I mean, I, I look at myself, I, I bluntly, I, I live very well. I live like a king in this country. 
And I look at the people around the world, they're not as well off. So yeah. I have so much to be grateful for. And why not? Somebody asked me the other day, I was on a mastermind and they said, how do you uh, judge or gauge your success? And I thought it was a great question. And for me, uh, I know a couple of people used money and, that, and I raised my hand and I said, you know, I judge my success on how many people tell me I change their life every week just through my speaking and my, my coaching and my keynotes and things like this. And so when you can impact people's lives, You're and right. I think that's why even anybody in a situation like you is you find something this powerful, one of the things you want to figure out is how to reach more people. Because yeah. it's fantastic. And I make the analogy of the person that had the church and there was just a few people and now it's a mega church, you know, with 5,000 people every Sunday at the service and so forth. But yeah, the positive thing is such a big part of it. And you know, water kind of seeks its own level, I understand. But uh, the, I was always a really positive person and been my entire life. And now I'm the gratitude guy. I had a father that I'd say good morning and he'd go, what's good about it? And I just thought, wow, what, what kind of a, an attitude is that for a parent to tell their child what's good about the morning and things that it so makes such a big difference. So, but I think that when, when the person is, in fact, let me use this opportunity. When you mentioned, I was going to save it till the end, but I want to use it now because we're talking about people and hopefully, you know, you can lead a horse to water, the old line, you can't make them drink, but somebody said once you can salt the hay you know, or something. So you can get them to maybe drink. Um, talk a little bit about the free sessions and things, because I will mention it again at the end, but I just think that's really important because I'm, I'm imagining if I'm Tom, I was like, you know what, try this, try this. It's going to make a big difference. All right. Okay. 15 days of free session on our website. Why? I realize this is different, new, it's novel. So to make this palatable, free of charge, we, we won't ask you for anything except your photograph. Send in your photograph for 15 days. We will work with you. You will experience some type of shift. You have to. Why? Because it's fundamental energy and it's designed to abet your health. So after 15 days, the majority of people say they, they feel something, that they feel better. And that's how we prove it. One person at a time. I'm all about results and I want people to have results. And the way we achieve those results are by the free trial. Yeah, that's excellent. And as I mentioned, I'll put it in the show notes too, but it's uh, scalarlight.com. Uh, yes, correct, .com. And so I think the free sessions, that would be fantastic. Because I think there's that, just getting rid of the skepticism or having people try things has been the best thing that I've said and I've used in mine. And for instance, I use a, a gratitude journal and I tell people write in a gratitude journal every day. And some, well, I just don't have the time and I don't. And I said, well, then, you know, why don't you do this? Start out with something small. Why don't you just write down one thing? Just right. one or two Good things day. you're grateful for. And then maybe the next day you can go to a sentence or the next day you can go to a paragraph or whatever. And they, they looked at me like, well, well, how is that the way that it is? I said, just do one word. It's better to do less than you hope for than nothing at all. And it's always right. And that's why I would really encourage people to take advantage of this too, because I think it's really cool. But um, so- we got about five minutes left, Tom. Any other thoughts that might convince people to, to try this or just things that you found? I mean, this is fascinating to me that, that would, because it's going to help people. You're right. It, it is going to help people. Um, well, let me provide these, this caveat. This is simple and easy. It's sunlight and starlight. Now, you walk outside every day, and obviously you're in the sunlight whether you realize it or not, there's trillions of stars that are sending you information, energy. And that is the backdrop of the universe. That, that gives the universe its, its fundament. The scalar energy is the fundamental life force of the universe. So what I'm doing is not arcane. It's rather common, but most people have never heard of scalar energy. The, the, the technology has been suppressed. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the, the, the men that preceded me, all of them had incredible results with this energy. And I am duplicating their results. Someday this will be an accepted study, an accepted discipline. We're at the cutting edge still, but what Nikola Tesla achieved, um, I am duplicating in many ways. This energy is going to change the way we live. This energy is going to, in many ways, liberate humanity. Mm -hmm. Technology is a tool. That's, that's all I propose. This tool will help us perform work functions, will increase our, our well-being, will make our lives more comfortable. So embrace this.
Tom, are there many competitors in the space? No. Wow. Very, very few people. But you have to spend time at this. This is a, a branch of science. It really is a new branch of physics. It's not taught in academia. And there's very few scientists who've ever really quite understood that this is a different dimension. A lot of people approach this as if this is going to be AC electricity. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. A little different. That's really neat. So, well, I really, I really admire you because this has obviously been, you said, 50 years at one point going back and, and so on. And right. uh, I would imagine the journey hasn't always been uh, linear in an upward trajectory. Yeah. I imagine there have been some ups and downs. What got you through the downs? Uh, faith in God, faith in myself. I see the great prospect and I, I at least see progress every year. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it might be painstaking, but there's progress. And that's what you have to be able to realize. You've got to allow the, the movement to increase. You have to let the, the people cogitate upon this and then embrace this. It's not going to happen overnight. And we mentioned, too, the, the free sessions on the website, scalarlight.com. And for those that might be took and taking a bunch of notes here, some of the really cool things that I can do to that person that might, well, maybe I will, maybe I won't. What's the top one or two or three tips you might say, well, here's probably the biggest benefit that you're going to get. And so I want you to take advantage of this. I, I use, and I'm not trying to be coy. You have nothing to lose, but your germs. Yeah. Why, wouldn't you want to, why wouldn't you want to get rid of germs? By the way, some of those germs lead to complications later in life. Yeah. Why not get, why not get rid of those pathogens? Some of those pathogens find their way past the blood brain barrier and cause neurological impairment. Yeah, nothing to lose but your germs. I like that. So that's good. So I will wrap up and this has been fantastic. And once again, on these free sessions at scalarlight.com, I encourage all you listeners and viewers to go there and take advantage of that free trial. And but I can't let my guests get away without the, my always having the final question that I have for every single guest on my podcast. And that is, Tom, what do you know today? that you would have liked to have known when you were 18 that would have helped you? And you get to pick one thing. Uh, uh, um, I, I think if I ever made a, a big, gigantic mistake in life is not just concentrating on one aspect of time, trying to do too much at once. So as the older I get, the more seasoned I become, I realize that you have to be very realistic. And if you could see one or two improvements a day, just concentrate on those. You're not going to there's no way you can address 50, 100 issues a day. So one, one issue at a time, that is the most beneficial approach that I have. Very profound. And, and I think, as you say, I really appreciate that. And I always end my podcast with that question. And that kind of reminds me of the, the concept of compound interest. You don't have to just do a little bit and it builds on, builds on and not try to take on the world and things. And so uh, again, Tom, thank you so much. And let me thank close you. with the information from my guests. Uh, and my listeners, my podcast is downloaded every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. on the Transformation Talk Radio Network. It's available on Apple, Spotify, and Google. Please subscribe and give me a five-star rating, as I mentioned earlier. I always appreciate that. And I know that people are struggling with all sorts of life issues. And I have a program I am very proud of called my Gratitude Coaching Program that gives you a coach that fully believes in you and can propel you forward that anything your mind can conceive uh, it can achieve. So the support you receive is unmatched and getting you to make changes that you've been wanting and needing to make. So whether it's your finances, your relationships, your career, your life's journey, you want to change, this is a great program. And you gain a complete understanding of your challenges. I ask great questions, providing guidance and a very high level of accountability, along with an attitude of gratitude, all combined to ensure your personal success. So for information about that, just go to thatgratitudeguide.com or thatgratitudeguide.com. Uh, podcast.com. And lastly, if you'd like to receive my Monday morning minute, I send out a 60 second video to start your week off on the right foot with uh, a positive message of gratitude. Just go to your text and text in the number 22828. That's 22828. And then in the message box, put in gratitude guy, and that'll get you signed up for the Monday morning minute. So thank you again, Tom. This has been a great session. I appreciate it. And thank you all for tuning in. And until next time, I'm David George Brook, that gratitude guy. And remember, be grateful and never quit. So thank you for listening to that gratitude guy podcast with David George Brook, where living with gratitude turns what you have into enough. 
Transformation starts now and you have everything you need to achieve great things. In a world that is constantly changing, there is motivation and inspiration right in front of us. And you can find yours right now. Don't wait. Visit thatgratitudeguy.com to get started living with gratitude today.